about time. Welcome back to another sonar video. I'm still in Texas. This is Canyon Lake. And uh, today's actual question was, how to use side imaging? What am I seeing on my side imaging unit? How to use it in shallow water? How to use it in deep water? So I'm gonna cover a bunch of different things in this video. And what's unique about Canyon Lake, it, uh, it's got a lot of flooded timber. Um, I don't know if you can see this right here. Hold on, let me zoom out. Yeah, you see all those trees sticking up out there? Yeah, a lot of flooded timber. If it's your first time to this channel, my name is Davis. This is the Flop and Crappie channel, and I do how-to videos, challenge videos, and vlogs. Um, if you're looking for more information on how to use fish finders or sonar, I'm going to post a link to a video series I've done. Um, this one will be included in that series of anything you probably want to know. But if you have any questions, post them in the comments section, or you can message me on Facebook and Instagram. I encourage you to follow me on both those sites. So. Let's go find some shallow water and I'll walk you through how I set up my side imaging. Hopefully there's not too much screen glare, it's a little hard right now, but I'm in about seven feet of water. And the first thing I'd recommend doing is if you can see in the top right, or excuse me, the top left and right, I got 55 feet showing from the left and right of my boat. Now the reason I go 55, sometimes I go down to 40. Anywhere between 40 and 60 feet is probably a good distance um, when either you're trying to fish shallow um, and you're trying to see structure in the shallow, or you're just trying to find fish on a specific, let's say, brush pile or tree that you already know is there. What this does is actually gives more pixels to smaller pieces of data. So whether it's sticks, whether it's fish, rocks, something like that, the unit will give a cleaner picture, a clearer picture um, with the fish and the rocks and all that stuff. So I got 55 left and right. Now the biggest question I had wasn't so much of the black area. The black area is right, pretty much right beneath my boat. The shaded area left and right. How do I know if there's a fish there? How do I know if it's a tree or something like that? There's two ways you can do that. Right now I got a mixture of hard and soft bottom. You can see there's some darker spots kind of shaded in and there's some lighter spots mixed throughout. Now every every so often you'll see that's a, that's a piece of wood or some log right here but you'll see bigger shadows. See these shadows off to the left and to the right? Most of them are to the left. Those are actually trees. Now, when you see fish, they're either gonna be very, very bright because it's gonna be a hard signal, or you'll just see the fish's shadow because they'll be suspended up in the water column. As the transducer sends a signal or that frequency, see, here's a big tree. It might not hit the entire fish, but it'll, it'll show that there's something blocking that frequency and it'll appear as a shadow on the shaded part. I use a gold palette here. Um, I'm just used to it. You can use whatever you want. But here was a big log and there might be some fish tucked in there. You see these little specks? There's some fish tucked in there and then the shadow. Now another point, the longer the shadow is, the taller or the bigger the structure. So these are smaller shadows. These are logs just laying down in the water. These are very smaller, sh smaller shadows compared to, um, let's see if we can find a bigger one. All right, so here's actually what this is showing is these are separate little shelves. So see how this shadow right here is a lot longer than let's say this shadow? That's because this is a deeper drop off, a deeper shelf. And this would also appear if it's a taller tree in the water, it would show as a longer shadow. So that's a huge drop off. I went from probably six, seven feet to now I'm in 30 feet of water right here. Um, but there's a tree and we can zoom in a little bit. It's, a, it's an older tree. There's not a whole lot on it, not a whole lot left of it anywhere, but there's a tree down there right on that, that drop off. Now if you notice, it went from this lighter lake bottom to now a darker lake bottom. That's the difference between a hard bottom, whether it's sand, gravel, rock, to a, a mud or a silt lake bottom or river system, whatever the bottom is. So you see this big shadow, that's because it's a tall tree. It's actually sticking out of the water behind me. That long shadow line right there. You see all these right here? Those are fish. I don't know what they are, but they're definitely fish. Uh, and the reason they're kind of blurred is because I started turning to my right, which as you can see, now I'm turning back to my left. Now, there's a brush pile right there. It's a lot easier to see fish and cover on a soft bottom, which is the darker bottom, 
than it is on a hard bottom. They stick out a lot more, you can tell the shadows. On a hard bottom lake, or if you're fishing a bay or something with hard bottom, you really gotta look for the shadows. See how this, this is a tree that's actually sticking out of water behind me. Come back here. Once you get less than five feet of water, it's pretty hard to tell. Uh, I don't really know how far behind my boat or outside of my boat that this is viewing. It says 55 right and left, but it's so shallow of water. Is the frequency actually getting out that far or not? To be honest, I don't know. I'll have to do more research on that. So that's pretty much what I look for when I'm fishing shallow water, the shadows, and then the light spots if you're fishing with soft bottom. Um, hard bottom, you're just looking for the shadows because those are, susp those are suspended fish uh, coming off the bottom. I'm gonna try to find some, well, we did find those fish back here. I think they're gonna start popping up again once I get out to the main part of this bay. Uh, so these are some fish through here. This is a school of something. I don't know what. I just saw a, a gar jump a little while ago when I was filming this earlier, and so I, they could be anything. They could be a pile of, I don't even know. I don't even know what's in here, but that's what I'm looking for, soft, a brighter color against the soft bottom. So let's go find some deep water and to find some trees. Because I think uh, a lot of you probably had questions of what fish look like on trees, how to separate them, stuff like that in deeper water, what I try to do for deeper water. Coming up on some trees in 20 feet of water here. Now normally if you, if I, like, I'm gonna show you this quick. Yeah, there's a, there's a tree right here. See that? I can see it out of the water. Normally if you can't see the tree, actually, if you can't actually see the tree coming out of the water like that, what I'd like to do is then change my range from 55 or however shallow you want it to about 90. 90 gives you a, uh, a wider field of view, but it doesn't try to cram too much information into your display unit. So if you do see a small brush pile or something like that, you'll actually be able to see it uh, on your display. It won't show up as like a little speck or something. If you go, probably you probably get away with like 100 to 105. I wouldn't go more than 105 uh, feet left and right because the problem with that, it tries to cram too much information and fish might hold to a brush pile that's only you know three feet in diameter. Well, that three feet in diameter, a little bush or tree or whatever, that might not look like much on your screen if you have it 120 or 200 feet left and right. So I recommend 90 feet when you're first trying to find cover, when you're trying to find the bigger brush piles or rock ledges, stuff like that. When you do find them, like that uh, that tree that was sticking out of the water there, then you can go ahead and shrink your range to something smaller. Now I'm gonna go right next to it, so I'm gonna shrink my range all the way down to 40 feet. Because I wanna see exactly uh, the detail I want to see exactly if there's fish on this tree or not. I'm going to get right up next to it. Um, I can't go over the top of it because it's sticking out of the water, and that would probably ruin my transom. Uh, but I can get right next to it and see if there's any fish suspended uh, just a foot apart from the tree up, coming up. Okay, here's the tree coming up on the left side of my screen. Now, if you really want to get, get, yeah, get specific, you can choose the left side of your screen. So here is the tree. There's the tree display. There might be some fish in here. You can see the shadows of the trunks of the tree, and there are some fish suspended out around that tree. Not very many. I mean, there might be a couple bass and some red ear. Here's another tree coming up. And there's really nothing on these trees. Nothing on these trees. That's the problem with clear water lakes. This lake in particular, there's a lot of cover and it's super clear water. I mean, it's gin clear. So a lot of times, even if I come up next to it, the crappie or panfish or bass, they might not hold close to the tree as the boat's coming up to it, they'll scatter. You can tell this is soft bottom. This is silt, this is muck, mud. And here's my tree coming up. On the left, that's a big tree, big tree. There might be one there. There might be some fish suspended down at the base of that tree. If you, if you can see, they're very small. Very small little specks. Um, they're gonna be smaller bass. They might be panfish of some kind, red ear, uh, crappie, bluegill, something like that. But 
that is pretty much what I'm trying to do when I have deeper water structure, stuff in 20 feet, 22 feet of water um, versus shallow water. The deeper water, I really want to find the structure, so I'm going 90 feet left and right with my side imaging, pinpoint it, and then go right over the top of it um, and zoom in to either side of my boat to figure out if there's actually fish tight on that cover, if they're suspended off it. It's really what I'm looking for on side imaging. Um, a lot of people just had questions, you know, what, what was I looking for in this shaded area? And again, in, in this, there's a fish right there. In soft bottom, this mud, this muck, they're going to show up as that brighter color right there. See that brighter color? In hard bottom, you're probably going to look for the shadow because a lot of times in a hard bottom, they're going to show up as a bright color, but it's going to be really hard to differentiate between that lake bottom versus that fish. So I hope that kind of answered some of your questions of what side imaging looked like. This wasn't a full-on tutorial of how to use side imaging, all the, all the techniques on it, but I really wanted to answer the question of what fish look like in this shaded area. And you can use any palette you want, blue, green, red, doesn't matter. Just get comfortable with one. I use the, the gold and uh, yellow scale, whatever this is called. So I appreciate you watching. Again, if you got any questions, you can message me on Facebook or Instagram or post them in the comment section below. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please click that subscribe button, click that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. I appreciate you watching as always. We'll see you.